Hello everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back again to uh, this short series on learning to play tribal. We're following on with uh, the videos about combat. This one is about overpowering. We've ran through the combat hand. We've ran through a video explaining what happens when you don't have a combat hand uh, because you don't, you know, you've got to play those five combat rounds, but you don't have enough cards in your hand, and your unit becomes panicked, and you're flipping blindly off the deck. Now I want to have a look at what happens uh, during this, uh, you know. Uh, overpowered rule. So let's have a look at the table here. Uh, I've got a little scenario set up here. Uh, again, the Maori's on your side, Mudmen on mine. As you can see, there's been two draws. The Maori's have won uh, one, one round. The Mudmen have won one, one, one round. Um, maybe by the end of these videos, I'll you know be proficient in saying that, but you know, bear with me. Both sides still have a card left in their combat hand. The last round was won by the Maoris, and they killed this Mudman. So they have advantage, and the Mudman must play first. So they'll play the last remaining card that they have in their hand for this combat round. It's a two of spades, not a very good card. And the uh, Maoris will play their card. It's a jack of clubs. Now, overpowering is where you significantly out, you know, weigh the value of your opponent's card. So in this case, I've played a two, and the Maoris have played a jack. For units armed with long weapons, such as the Maoris here, if they beat the opponent's score by at least, uh, you know, a factor of three times, so I played a two, so we need two, four, six. If they play more than six, they will uh, overpower me and do two wounds instead of one. In this situation, as you can see, they've obviously played higher than a six, so they're gonna do two points of damage. They're gonna win the combat round. The Mudmen are gonna to have to uh, retreat because they've lost, but you know there's our overpowering rule. So if you are armed with long weapons and you flip more than three times or triple the value of your opponent's card, you will overpower them and do two points of damage. Short weapons, only overpower by a factor of two. So for example, let's say that they had played this two. I would only need to play something higher than a four to outpower them or overpower them. Because of the brutal nature of a close combat weapon, you know, you're in close, you can grab someone and just crack them on the side of the head, etc. Um, long weapons need three, a factor of three. Short weapons need a factor of two to overpower your opponent and do two points of damage during that combat round as opposed to the normal one that you would on a normal strike card. That is the overpowered rule. Now I think we have been through everything to do with combat, how we form our combat hand, you know, what happens when you're panicked, what happens if you flip a card strike card that's much higher than the value of the card that your opponent has played, it's called being overpowered. Um, I think that's all there is in terms of the card mechanics for learning about combat. We'll come back in the next one and talk about honor. So what's been happening during this engagement? As I said at the very beginning of this series, of this series, you know, the game is all about honor. Um, whoever has the most honor at the end of the game wins. If at some point during the game someone runs out of honor, the game is over. Um, what's been happening with this honor pool that we both have? during these, these combat sequences during the game. We'll come back and talk about Honor shortly. As per usual, if you've got questions, queries, comments, put them in the comment section below. Description's full of links. I hope you're finding it useful. Thanks for tuning in for this very, very quick one on being overpowered. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.